Tonight, a ping pong ball will determine the future of the NBA. It's Tuesday, May 16th. I'm senior writer Owen Poindexter, and this is Front Office Sports Today. The NBA draft lottery is tonight, and it is perhaps the most anticipated draft lottery since 2003, when LeBron James was entering the draft. This year, while LeBron and the LA Lakers begin the Western Conference Finals against the Denver Nuggets, we will find out which team will earn the right to draft Victor Wembanyama. Wembanyama is 19. He is 7 foot 4, give or take. You can actually find multiple heights listed for him depending on where you look. And here's TNT analyst and former NBA player Kenny Smith talking about him. This kid shoots the three, handles the ball, gets into areas of the floor. Seven foot five, he's going to shoot over you. Not many guys can really defend him. And the ball handling is what makes him special to me. It's not- ESPN analyst and former NBA player Richard Jefferson agrees. Seven five, high release point, elevation on his jump shot, quickness, footwork, all of the things that you put into it is that's the scariest thing that we've ever seen. And here's the Ringer founder and CEO Bill Simmons on Wembenyama. This guy is an alien. We've never seen anything like this. He's seven four. It feels like he's taller than seven four. He looks seven five. He moves in a way that is just so unusual for a tall guy. The tall guys always look either a little clumsy, a little stiff. Either they they got the Holmgren thing where their backs a little bit up. Just something's always look. This guy moves like he's six five. You can even find serious analysts saying he could eventually be the best basketball player of all time, which is something you should normally be embarrassed to say about someone who has never played in the NBA, but here I think you're allowed. Simmons also tosses around some ideas for his nickname. I feel like this is the rare case where we should really try to get this one right. For whatever reason, the NBA has way better nicknames than any other league, and if he's truly a generational talent, let's not mess this one up. Simmons suggests alien, which I think I like. It speaks to his unique physical traits. And also LeBron used that term. So I'll say alien is the front runner for now. But if you have ideas, let me know at today at frontofficesports.com. A bunch of NBA teams tanked as hard as they could to maximize their chances of landing the alien. But props to the NBA for adjusting their rules to not reward those teams too much. From 1994 to 2004, the worst team in the league had a 25% chance of scoring the top pick. Following reforms, now the three worst teams all have a 14% chance. That's roughly the same odds as Shaquille O'Neal hitting three free throws in a row. Those teams are the Detroit Pistons, Houston Rockets, and San Antonio Spurs. They are followed by the Charlotte Hornets at 12.5%, Portland Trailblazers at 10.5%, and Orlando Magic at 9%. The remaining teams with any kind of chance are in order, the Indiana Pacers, Washington Wizards, Utah Jazz, Dallas Mavericks, Chicago Bulls, Oklahoma City Thunder, Toronto Raptors, and with a 1 in 200 shot, the New Orleans Pelicans. Wherever he ends up, we can expect an immediate impact in ticket sales. When the Pelicans got the pick that turned into Zion Williamson in 2019, they reportedly sold 3,000 season ticket packages that day. And last week, the Chicago Blackhawks sold $5.2 million in season ticket packages after winning the NHL's draft lottery and the right to draft hockey's equivalent of Wembenyama, Connor Bedard. The NBA's present is playing out in Denver, LA, Boston, and Miami, but the future will be determined tonight by a lottery. Up next, we're sticking with the NBA across the Atlantic, and we didn't exactly plan this, but also with people named Victor W. I spoke to the CEO of NBA Africa, Victor Williams. The NBA's work in Africa is unlike anything that I know of being undertaken by a major U.S. league overseas. We'll get some insights into what's going on there right after this. Here's what's trending now. You can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, gaining visibility and control over their financials, inventory, HR, e-commerce, and more. Everything they need to reduce manual processes, boost efficiency, build forecasts, and increase productivity. Whether your business generates millions or hundreds of millions of dollars, take advantage of this special financing offer of no payments or interest for six months at netsuite.com slash front office. That's netsuite.com slash front office. Very happy now to be joined by Victor Williams, CEO of NBA Africa. Welcome, Victor. 
Hi, Owen. Thanks. Uh, great opportunity to be here and to talk to your podcast listeners. Let's start to just get to know you a little bit. So um, how did you come to be CEO of NBA Africa? Uh, I joined the NBA in August of 2020. Uh, previously, I'd worked in banking um, in the U.S. and uh, in Africa. Uh, one of the things I did as a banking executive was lead and grow businesses across multiple African countries. Um, and so when the NBA was looking for um, a CEO for its Africa expansion, um, you know, I was approached about that job. I found it really intriguing and exciting as a big basketball fan myself, uh, someone with a huge respect for the NBA and what it was doing globally. Uh, so the opportunity to uh, join the NBA and to help lead its Africa and expansion was, I thought, a unique opportunity that uh, I should get involved with. And that's how I became CEO of NBA Africa. What are the, the league's goals, the NBA's goals in Africa? So we want to um, grow the game in Africa um, on a number of different dimensions uh, so that basketball and the NBA brands associated with basketball can become some of the uh, most popular um, and most uh, uh, successful um, uh, brands on the African continent. And so for us, that means growing the participation in the game from the grassroots level all the way through to the elite and the professional levels. It means engaging with our fans and growing the number of people who are fans of the NBA. And it also means um, developing a strong commercial uh, offering here in the league. And by commercial, I mean, um, you know, marketing our media rights, uh, marketing merchandise, uh, providing content to, uh, you know, media partners as well as direct to the consumer um, and um, holding live events uh, on the continent, such as the uh, Basketball Africa League, uh, which we formed uh, a few years ago. I don't want to make Africa into a monolith because it's a huge continent with you know, many different countries, many different cultures, many different environments. Uh, but I am curious about the popularity and the growth of just basketball as a sport that people are interested in, people play. I think a lot of people in the U.S., they know that soccer is incredibly popular everywhere else in the world, but they don't really know much about the interest in other sports. So yeah, how um, what's, what's the basketball culture like? Um, in Africa to the degree that you can sum it up? Yeah, look, I mean, I think it varies, obviously, from market to market, but our sense is that basketball is the second most played uh, team sport and participation sport on the continent. Now, in some markets, it's actually, you know, one of the leading sports um, in a place like Angola. Uh, and in other markets, it, you know, it's behind uh, some other traditional sports in those markets. But overall, across the continent, um, we would say basketball uh, ranks number two in terms of uh, participation. But having said that, we see a lot of room to grow the game uh, on the continent to make more African young people um, aware of the game, to have them start playing the game at a young age, and all of that then leading to growth in participation and growth in uh, fandom. And um, you talk about Africa not being a monolith. We're very much aware of that. And so part of our expansion plan and part of what we've done with NBA Africa is to open um, NBA offices in a few countries so that we can get closer to the basketball ecosystem and the fans and the opportunities in those markets. We have um, offices today in South Africa uh, and in Senegal. Uh, in Nigeria and in Egypt. Um, and uh, uh, and so we're really pleased with how we're planting the NBA flag and building the brand across the continent. And of course, a big part of your growth efforts is the Basketball Africa League. So uh, tell me about how that's been progressing, you know, since its launch a few years ago. So the Basketball Africa League, or the BAL as we, as we call it, um, really is... Um, it's, a, it's an amazing property. It's the first time the NBA has started a league outside of North America. And we did it because, you know, we are very convinced about the talent uh, here in Africa. Um, today, there are more than 50 players in the NBA who come 
directly from Africa or have at least one parent from Africa. Um, so the African representation in the NBA is, is, is already quite meaningful and speaks to the talent that there is on the continent. And we think there is uh, significantly more talent available on the continent, uh, but it does require, um, it needed structures such as a high quality professional league so that African youth who love the game and see a future for themselves in the game can actually be able to build that career here on the continent and play professionally uh, on the continent. The other thing um, that we're doing with the Basketball Africa League is we're creating a product that is played in Africa, close to African fans, at times when, you know, African prime time, so to speak. So it's helping us drive fan engagement around basketball, and it's helping us create more opportunities for partnerships uh, with commercial partners uh, here on the continent. We're now in season three of the BAL. In fact, I'm speaking to you from Cairo, uh, where we're holding uh, some of the BAL games. And the growth and the receptivity that we've seen from the African continent as well as from uh, you know, the US and the African diaspora has really, really been very gratifying. Is there any conflict or issues around um, uh, if a player is very successful in the Basketball Africa League, they could go to the NBA, but I imagine at some point you don't want all of your best players leaving the league. Is there any issues around that? Well, look, um, you know, playing in the NBA is... Um, it is rarefied air for the vast majority of basketball players around the world, right? There of are course, yeah. 450 uh, or so slots uh, in the NBA. Our focus with the BAL is to really create an opportunity uh, for basketball players to pursue their trade um, and, and, and to, to fulfill their potential here on the African continent. And we want them to be able to do so and earn a good uh, professional um, uh, living, to play at a high level of competition, to improve their skills, etc. There will always be players, um, as we've seen with other leagues around the world, whose skills are at such a level that it makes sense for them to go to the NBA to fulfill their potential. And we certainly would welcome that. It would be a great advert for how the BAL is developing um, uh, players, but we would expect um, that the vast majority of BAL players should be able to have a great career here in Africa. Speaking of players going to the NBA, um, Joel Embiid became the second African player to win an NBA MVP um, after Akeem Olajuwon in 1994. What did that mean for your efforts in, in Africa? Well, in, you know, first of all, we're tremendously, we offer, you know, Great congratulations to Joel and, um, and just congratulate him on that, this singular achievement. We're really, really proud of uh, what he's been able to accomplish. You know, he um, he's from Cameroon and um, he was, you know, discovered, so to speak, um, at a camp that was held by one of our uh, other African players, uh, Luke Mbamute. Um, and then from there, he went to our elite camp that we hold for African youth called Basketball Without Borders. I believe Joel attended that camp in 2011. And the great thing about that camp is that these youth from Africa uh, compete against others from around the continent. Uh, so it's an opportunity for them to test themselves against um, the, 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 um, against a broader set of talent than they ever have before. And they're also coached uh, at those at that camp by NBA coaches, NBA players, um, and NBA executives. So it's a great um, uh, place for uh, talent to be discovered. And um, the fact that Joel has gone from BWB to you know a stellar career with the Sixers and now uh, MVP is going to be something that I think all African basketball uh, playing youth are going to recognize. And it also provides validation for the pathway that we, we're building to help uh, players progress from grassroots to the professional level. 
Yeah, I, I would love to have been a fly on the wall listening to coaches, seeing him for the first time, saying like, you know, who's that guy? He seems pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Victor, thanks so much for joining us. Fascinating stuff. And yeah, please keep in touch on uh, on everything you've got going on. Thanks very much, Owen. It's great to uh, be able to uh, speak to you and your uh, listeners and always happy to come back and provide further updates on how we're growing the game of basketball in Africa. That's it for today. The draft lottery is at 8 p.m. Eastern. Lakers Nuggets tips off at 8.30. While you're waiting, drop us a rating on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow.